filters into the shark's <laughs> nostrils. When he inhales her blood, his pupils, they dilate like crazy. His entire eyes become, <laughs> all his, his, his eyes become black. And he's like, oh, with a British accent. <laughs> and the guy was like, wait, I want to talk to you about something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Warfare, when I say spiritual warfare, as in you are not afraid of Satan. Amen. The things that the Lord has revealed to you belong to you. The, Satan's only tool against you is ignorance. Amen. I like what someone said. The masquerade chasing you in your dreams is your ignorance. The evil spirit that is pressing you at night is what? Your ignorance. If you know who you are, like someone I, I was listening to once was telling me that um, he, um, that um, evil spirits are coming to press him, that when he says Jesus, that he can come out of it. But then this time around, they came to press him and they covered his mouth. <laughs> So he couldn't say Jesus. So man, I'm just like, hi, they've deceived you. You think that it's by saying Jesus with your mouth that you break free. You are God. The Bible says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Which is more powerful, Jesus himself or a member of his body? Sorry, which is more powerful? Calling the name Jesus or being a member of his body? Which, which is more powerful? So is it by saying Jesus? Is it by, is it those, it's those syllables that gives you power? It's, but you're a member of his body. You're inside of him. You're one with him. You're united with him. And then they are now choking you. You can tell what is choking you is definitely your ignorance. So all that lack of breathing, huh? Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> when they finish doing the job, you now shout Jesus' name as if and just looking at you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <They're> not <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, welcome. I haven't seen y'all in a bit. Good to see y'all. Aw, it's a cute party. <laughs> Cuteness overload. Amen. Hallelujah. The evil spirit chasing you at night, amen? It is your ignorance. Once you understand this, you discover that once you once, once um, you value the place of teaching, amen? You value the place of the word. You value people that have gone through things, amen? Something that people don't understand is that also for things, you must be, uh, you must allow that resilience instinct to flow through you where you don't take no for an answer, amen? Who knows what I'm saying? The enemy tells you that, oh, if, let me share a quick story. Baba Lola was about to do a mission trip, and um, he was praying towards, um, you know, he wanted to cast visions that, of what the Lord was going to do during that meeting. And he spent like three days in prayer. When he was finished, he came out from his prayer closet and headed straight for the mission field. You know when your eyes are still red? You know, prayer fire. So it's going, it's going like this towards the mission field. And on the way there, out of the water, there's a river that he had to cross to get to that place or whatever. Out from the water came out a mermaid. And she said in Yoruba, natural tongue. I don't know what she said in natural tongue, but she said this in English. She didn't say in English, but she said it in Yoruba. Yeah, I can't say what she said in Yoruba. But she said, Oga, let's calm down, basically. Um, let's just divide the, <laughs> the land into two parts. You keep this part, I'll keep this part. Didn't know why she said that. Because he had the decision. He could make the decision on how much real estate could be taken. Who knows what I'm saying? The enemy is not going to bargain with you, amen, if you don't own everything. Is everyone listening? So he had already collected the real estate. They now came to now, what he came to now do was to now calm him down. Ah, guy, man of God. He can just, <laughs> Jesus, so much fire. Uh -uh, let's calm down now. There's no fight here. We're all friends. Amen. <laughs> Queen of the coast, Baba Lola. Uh, <laughs> we can work something out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there's going to be warfare. And this looks like you taking back things like your purity. Amen. Taking back things like your Bible study life. Taking back your prayer life. Taking back, amen, your career. God assigned career objectives. Taking back things like the right mindset. If you've, been, if you've had poverty mindset, ravage your soul. Take back what belongs to you, amen. Take back your identity as God's child. Take back your healing. How do you know that the Bible said that healing is children's bread? You know what children's bread means? The child doesn't ask for food. How does the child ask for food? Ah! That's what they have to do. So food is, it, it, the mother prepares food for the children ahead of time, right? There is no, no when, when, especially during the breastfeeding phase, mothers, they would have formula, right, set as backup. Then they will have pre-squeezed milk jugs. Then there's now the live, what is it now, breastfeeding itself. So there's arrays of things waiting for you as a child, Amen. As God's offspring, beloved, 
Hallelujah. There's many things that come to us by virtue of who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen? I'm just talking about 2022. Hallelujah. It's a year of warfare. We're going to be taking back what belongs to us. Amen? And we're going to be taking it. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. The violent take it by force. Amen? What does that mean? For God to dominate you. Amen? For God to have dominion over you, there is going to be what? Conflict. You know why? Some individuals, they think they, they have a right over you. They think so. You know, something about spirits is that spirits, by nature, what's up? What's your name, sir? Your name is? Ikena. What's up, Ikena? How you doing? I don't think I've seen you before. Have I seen you before? Have you seen me before? No. Okay. Welcome, Ikena. Come on, welcome, Ikena. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the word spirit, um, if you go to a bar, to be preach the gospel and nothing else, amen, if you go to a bar for, for whatever reason, amen, um, you know that the word spirit um, is used interchangeably for alcohol, for wine, right? And what does wine do? It influences, right? It tamper. The Bible says, um, not the Bible, it's a crime to drive under the influence, right? <laughs> driving under the influence usually would mean that you're either high from like some kind of substance abuse, but usually it's drinking, right? You've been drinking a spirit. That is something that literally would happen too also. A spirit can influence you and tamper with how your senses, they work, right? What spirits do is that they, that influence that they carry, hey, <laughs> can someone help me call everyone downstairs as they're celebrating each other? <laughs> Hallelujah. What spirits do is that spirits, they, they are so persuaded, amen, of what they believe in, that when they come around you, the aura, amen, of their convictions, it begins to influence you. It's like, for example, now let's say I really, really, really love basketball. Or let me say one, I really like Star Wars. So um, recently, I've, not, I've never been tempted to watch a TV show in years, amen. This is the first time I've been tempted, and it was this new Star Wars TV show called Kenobi. They basically, they know, they knew the buttons to press to get to me. They pressed all the buttons. <laughs> I remember I was, I went somewhere, and when I got there and I saw the trailer, I just paused. I said, Kai, I have to pay seven pounds for this thing. It's, or, or seven, seven dollars or seven pounds, depending on which con um, country your VPN is this thing in. Um, I was like, thinking to myself, hmm, can I make this thing? But I know I, I should not be as a child of God. I should be focused on God. I should be praying and fasting. I should not be. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what happened was um, um, one of my friends or whatever had the, had the subscription, so I ended up not paying anything. <laughs> so anyways, I watched a few of the episodes, and um, I met one of my friends. I was talking about it, and as we were talking, I, as I began to talk about this thing, he didn't really care. My, my junior brother, my junior brother, who doesn't care about any of these things, as I was talking, he was not saying to himself, ah, as you finish talking about this thing, maybe I should go and check this thing out. So what happened? I just influenced him by my obsession with that thing. Does that, does that make sense? That's what spirits do. By the time they finish explaining to you why God is not real, by the time they finish explaining to you why God is not going to answer you, by the time they finish explaining to you why you are tired, you know that, I'm telling you, I know what I'm saying. There's times when, there's this, oh, so like, end of last year, I had, I'm, I'm still talking, we're going to pray, okay? <laughs> we're going to do opening prayer in a second, okay? Period of last year, when, um, period of time last year, I, I went through a few things a man of God gave me some words, and he told, explained to me some things about warfare and spiritual promotion. And he told me that there's some things I need to go through to be able to break into some kind of authority. How many of you know, like, like Benson Idahosa, all right? Some things he broke into, amen, by virtue of resolution about who he is in Christ. Because of strong conviction in this man. Yeah, that was Uncle Lala! Everyone, pay, focus on, focus on the... <laughs> Don't be distracted. Please, Uncle Lala, come and sit down next to me. <laughs> you can sit wherever, you can sit wherever, you can sit wherever. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because of conviction, amen, about who he is in Christ, what you discover is that this man confronted many dark entities. And over time, that conviction began to deepen. It got to the place where there was a witch's convention. And during the witch's convention, they were threatening him. Let's him know that your meeting, I think you know, he was threatening them. He said, now, you cannot be holding a witch's convention in the same city that I'm holding a meeting. I know what they said. They said that even if Jesus Christ himself should come now, he would still hold our meeting. No, they told them, leave Jesus Christ out of it. The host that say, this meeting will not hold. Now, someone will say, ha, he's a child of God. He should be saying, bring Jesus inside. No, take Jesus out. No, 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 no. He knows that he's in Christ. 
there is a conviction. Amen. Wow, this is incredible. What are you guys doing back there? Hallelujah. Okay? He knows that he's in Christ. Amen? The conviction is strong. And that conviction over time is almost subconscious. So when he's saying, I will deal with you, he's not talking about himself. Like, like what Paul said. It's his Christ that lives, right? Not I, but Christ that lives in me, right? The life that I live, I live not in, um, by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? This is something that is very, very important when you're waging warfare. You're not going to be dealing with, um, with them on the basis of whether or not you, hallelujah, whether or not you prayed or you fasted, whether or not you, amen? I know what I'm saying. Listen very closely to me, okay? And the fruit of this conviction, the way you know you're, you're hearing what I'm saying is that you're going to be poised to engage the spiritual realm more intentionally, the person that doesn't understand what I'm saying is going to be poised to go and watch the TV show I spoke about earlier on. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There's a way you can listen to someone and you pick out stupid things the person said. No, you can read your Bible and you go on a tangent that has nothing to do with what God is saying. But in the Bible, there are specific things that God is highlighting that we ought to do. I'll give a good example. Jesus Christ said that, the Pharisees, right? They would see the instructions in the Bible. They would ignore all the things that God said. The Bible said the weighty matters of the law. Faith, judgment, and mercy. And they're going to start giving tithe on what? Mint. When they are adding pepper, they would cut out some of the pepper for God. Then their brother and sister in Christ that is suffering, they will so beat him. Eh? Who knows what I'm saying? Now, in their eyes, they are righteous. Why? They are so holy that even down to the pepper, they are holy. Now, they came all the way down to pepper, but then they left behind their brother and sister in Christ. Who knows what I'm saying? Don't be that person. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, anyways, um, 22 year of warfare. Um, warfare, um, let me, I was going to say about, about not spending time in prayer, not spending time in the word. I'm saying this because let's say you're someone that you've not, maybe you've not been faithful in the place of prayer or the word. The enemy is going to want to condemn you, right? And say to you, who gives you, what gives you a right to confront me? When was the last time you spoke to God? When was the last time you spent time in the word? When was the, no, 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 no. Now, you don't have to. Someone would say, ah, it's true, I should get my Bible. That's good, right? But a more, will I say now, riveting conviction is understanding that because of who you are in Christ, you will spend time in the Word. Does that make sense? And so you identify with the Lord Jesus first and use that. First of all, the Bible says, he's the devil, right? And he'll flee from you, right? Mm -hmm. But when you submit to God. So you make up your mind that because I am God's child, I should be found in God's presence, right? Do my father's business. Now, also, because I am God's child, you have no right to condemn me. How do you do that? When the enemy brings condemnation your way, you have every right as God's child to shut him up. Amen? Convicts you. Let's say you've not been. I'm, this is not a lie. If you don't read your Bible and pray, you don't have any strength to. to you know what I'm saying? The life, the Christ life is a, is a system. When I say it's a system, if I take you. Okay, if I take you and I put you on, on the planet Mars, right? Now, unless you really know who you are in Christ, what's going to happen to you? You will die. Who knows? It's not, it's not, I'm not prophesying doom over you. I'm not prophesying doom. I'm not doom prophet. You what? <laughs> you will die. <laughs> you know why? There are some essential things, amen, that form kind of like the fabric of what you know as, as life, human life here, okay? There are requirements that are there. Now, if you want to live out the human life, these essentials must be present. They must be actively engaged. So there's no holding your breath and saying, I'm a human being. <gasps> Are you a human being? Yes. That, that's not how it works, right? The conviction of being human, amen, there's, there's a context it's in. Does that make sense? So when you're saying I'm God's child, you're not speaking in isolation of pray, praying and fasting. Does that make sense? In isolation of the word. No, God's offspring, to look at what God's offspring looks like, look at Jesus. What did he do in his free time? Does that make sense? Look at Jesus, look at the instincts he had. I like what um, someone um, explained to me that as God's child, you would actually have the greatest form of fellowship interacting with God people, God entities. So, for example, now, you cannot, there's a me measure of pleasure you get by interacting with a dog. How many of you know that? But you cannot have, you cannot gist with your dog. Who knows what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot break things down with your dog. You cannot explain why things are, what, what's happening right now with your dog. Your dog cannot bear your burdens. What can your dog do? 
wolf, look sad, lick you, wag its tail, ask you to belly rub it. What, what else can they do? Can they counsel you, you know, concerning that business deal? I think that maybe, I feel, the dog can't, the <laughs> unless you're Balaam, Balaam and you're in rebellion, <laughs> or an angel appears. Okay, apart from those, un, you know, unique and unusual situations, amen, like, Let's say your dog happens. Maybe an angel is in the room and wants to minister to you and they want to speak to your dog. Amen. Who's ever had that experience before? There's someone I know of that had that experience. Amen. It wasn't their dog. It was different things around them that were inanimate that were talking to them. The person was actually Daniel Camper. Hallelujah. Yeah, well, yes, 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 yes. We've had all kinds of fun. There's actually been waves of Daniel Camps. I discovered that over the years, there's a wave, different waves. There's somewhere it's like core teaching, core holiness, core supernatural. Core this, core that. And so I'm just like, huh, supernatural. <laughs> it will shock you that. <laughs> it will shock you which years of the supernatural. Ooh, weird. Oh, no, we've had some. There's one specific camp. I don't know if you remember that boy, Oklahoma, when that boy that um, wanted to levitate to Jesus. That was the one that I said, wow, this thing, I don't even know what is happening again in this Christian walk. <laughs> Anything is so possible now. <laughs> Because he said, he said it passively. Oklahoma was like, there's someone here. God is going to teach you how to levitate or something like that. He said it passively or whatever. The next day. Anyway, let's keep on going. Hallelujah. So, um, what did I stop? Dog fellowship, right? There's only so much fellowship you can have with your dog. Hallelujah. But when you see your friend, right? When you see your mom, when you see your, well, depending on how close you are, when you see a fellow person that is endeared to you, there is a way that you open up. You cannot open up to your dog like that, right? I'm telling you, as God's child, that conviction does something to you in the place of fellowship. You cannot fellowship more with a human being than you can with God. Who knows what I'm saying? Or let me say it like this. There are, more, there are greater depths of fellowship with God that you can have than you can with a human being. Because both of you have the same spirit. In fact, not the same spirit as in the same kind of spirit. You and God have the exact same spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you cannot have any form of any, you cannot be deeper in fellowship as far as like what is available is concerned with any other entity than with God. This conviction will drive you to ask some questions alone. In fact, can I tell you something? I was sharing this with someone or whatever that, um, there was this, this spirit, of, spirit of time in my life when um, casting out demons was something that was happening a lot, not intentionally. We all cast out demons accidentally. And if you're a child of God, you will. Whenever you get attacked as a child of God, after you do, let's say you have a, let's say you're spending time in prayer and then bad things begin to happen, or you're spending time in worship or in the Word and bad things begin to happen. Know that it's because you wounded someone. Is anyone listening? You're spending time in prayer in the Word. You think you're just spending time in prayer in the Word. You don't know that you're spending time in prayer in the Word is that hurting someone. There's someone that um, Lord exposed. I used to come around here before, and what and I discovered later on that whenever the person gets sick, is because maybe someone, maybe we had a powerful vigil or a or a prayer meeting or something like that or whatever. I didn't realize that there was a correspondence between peak of um, what is it now God's power being manifest in the room and this person being sick. After a while, I was just like, ah, every time that God is moving powerfully. This person has one funny issue here and there. Hallelujah. Let's discover that whenever anyone ministers in any capacity that is significant, this person goes under duress. Not because they're saying that, and where's that witch in this room? Where's that wizard? Where's that warlord? Where's that foreign entity? You don't have to do any of that. As your, lo your love on Jesus is more deadly than you're looking for evil spirits, I can assure you. Yes, and I'll share, I'll just share a few things with you that will really help in this direction. Amen? Or help hammer this in. So when I was in Bible school, um, I'm going to pray after this event. <laughs> when I was in Bible school, I'm just speaking about spiritual warfare again, okay? Um, there was a time when I was experiencing God's presence in a way that I cannot describe fully. I'll give some words that I think would help, but it was insane. That's the truth. I would wake up from sleep, and electricity, I mean, electricity was just nonstop. I would sometimes, I'll, I'll wake up, in the middle of the night, shaking on my bed, it just goes over my body. I'll go to the bathroom to pee, and it was just a, it was a constant thing. I can't say now that I knew what was happening that was causing it per se, but it was just constant. This lasted for, I would say, maybe three or four months before finally one day it disappeared. Ha! That day disappeared. 
I confessed every sin I could confess. I cried. I said, I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for that. It took me a while to realize that in, this, in your pursuits of God, you pursue God for a season. He pursues you. Whichever comes first, it doesn't matter. But know that whenever the other one, there's a measure of the other one that would bring you to the next one. Does that make sense? So God pursues you for a season. You're just getting blasted by God. Jesus is so wonderful. He's so good. At that time, you don't feel anything. Ha, God, what's happening? This is now where you now open up your own bowels and now pursue God like a madman. Yes, yeah, it's part of your Christian walk. You have seasons, ebbs and flows. I know whenever I clock those seasons that, okay, now I have to pursue God with everything. Amen? And there's times when I'm by myself, oh, Holy Ghost just hits me. I'll be like, sitting on my bed. It happens to, if you're a seeker of God, it happens to you. By yourself, just be ravaged, okay? So this thing lifted. Hi, Jesus. I said, I'm sorry for what I said. Confess, 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 blah, 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 blah. So what would now happen was, because I needed God's presence to survive, I'm in the presence of God, I, I like pleasure, I like fun. So once I'm not feeling God, I'm in trouble. Does that make sense? So I must be feeling God all the time. When I say feeling God, there must be a, not necessarily, a, not feeling necessarily like feeling per se, but there must be this, <clears throat> yes, inner conviction of, yes, yes, yeah. Without that thing, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place, if that makes sense. I'm not, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not an imaginary person. When I mean a real person, God must be real to me. Does that make sense? So, um, and there's many ways that you can learn how to make this work in your favor, if that makes sense. What this dri would drive me to do is I will spend a lot of time in pursuits of God. And after that's finished, because I also I meditate on things a lot, the pursuit continues in my head, if that makes sense. I'm saying my head. That place where we <laughs> engage things, right? Because we point in this place. It might shock you that the place is actually here, but whatever. Okay. So that's, that thing lifted, and I began, because of that, I knew that I had to survive. What did I do? I said, Epa, hey, Jesus, I must find God somehow. So I'll, I'll go and find the messages that pierce my heart the most. At that time, it was John Bevere. When the guy will give conviction, as in when you say something, you should not be doing this. You should be telling the truth. Stop lying. When you're driving, don't do that. So you go over like practical things that will pierce my soul. Now, when it pierce my soul, I'll just pause. And I'll spend time and allow that thing to do its work in me. That was my way of cheating that season to fetch you know, like God's presence is like water. I'm trying to get. <laughs> Who knows that thing called rub and shine? Anyone know what rub and shine is? You know, wait, let's say you're taking a shower and then you're just pouring, pouring, and you now realize that you only have like one bowl, one bowl of water left. At that point in time, you just realize that the efficiency that's <laughs> hidden inside of you. You just throw that one drop of water. <laughs> and you use that one thing, rinse your entire body. When you finish, one more level. Go around every strand of your hair and pull out every last <laughs> puff of, of what is it now? What's that thing called? The poof from smoke from your soap. What's that thing called? The foam or whatever, soapy foam or whatever. When you finish everything, that one drop will come out and you say, Thank you. you you've, done, you've done well. Amen. I'll do rub and shine with God's presence. Because I didn't have the electricity of before. So the little I will get, hey, I will rub and shine <laughs> with the presence of God. What does that mean? I will make sure I stay and maximize every second of it. So because of that, I didn't realize that that thing is actually very hostile to Satan. When you're pressing into God and it seemed like he's not there, I didn't realize how much of a danger I was. So what happened was that I went to a, um, what is now, someone that was a, one of my friend's houses, and um, they lived in, down south in Texas. Oh, yeah, there's witches everywhere. It's not just in Nigeria. Amen? You know how many know Thor? There's a movie about Thor about to come out. How many know that guy is... An evil spirit. That's Shango's son. How do you know that? Well, that's Shango himself, right? But he's, he just puts a different... You know there's, you know, there's um, Bone Straight. <laughs> then there's... <laughs> so he took off the curly-haired <laughs> curly weave and put on what? Straight hair. Bone Straight. Bone Straight. With gold, <laughs> blonde bone, bone Straight. And he said, what's your name, Sean? Uh, Thor. <laughs> it's the same evil spirit, though. Just that we don't have CGI that the MCU... <laughs> Producers, Kevin Feige is just not sponsoring our Shango movie. If you sponsored your Shango movie, you'd be shocked. Uh -uh. Yeah, we can't buy your Shango shirt. <laughs> Jesus. Eh? Some people are need to be respecting me nowadays. Eh? Hallelujah. Same evil spirit, right? When uh, I went to this girl's house, I didn't realize that her cousin was a practicing um, witch. Hallelujah. And to be honest, I didn't realize until the end. Huh? Yes, a white, yes, white. Well, this one, she, had, she was malicious. This one was malicious. 
The white witches are the good witches. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I have more funny things to say. <laughs> so apparently, you know how many of dogs are strange? Apparently, there's this new movie called Multiverse of Madness, okay? It's a dumb, dumb movie. I'll, I'll give you the wisdom for 2022. Do not watch that movie. It's a stupid movie. The new one. It is stupid. It is stupid. I'll give you wisdom for life. Do not watch that movie. Just, just wisdom. So a quote from that movie is that um, he's talking to his fellow sorcerers. All of them are involved in what? Sorcery. He tells them, I have bad news. Wanda is a witch. All of them are, <gasps> <laughs> So talking to all the native doctors, my sister is a witch. No, what can we do to save her? Hallelujah. Who does that what I'm saying? The pot calling the kettle what? <laughs> so they're a bunch of idiots. Hallelujah. So when this young lady began to, began to, what is it? Apparently she was attacking her, her cousin. And what would happen is that at night, she would spawn all these werewolves. And they would begin to torment this girl in her sleep. So what I didn't know this guy, I didn't know what my sisters did. That night they couldn't sleep because they could see they, my sisters they have discerning of spirits. So they, they can see, they see things all the time. They see people are carrying stuff. So they, they, they pray for God to close that thing because it's kinda of, kind of scary. You're just walking by yourself and you're seeing what everyone else is carrying. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the next morning, after they slept, slept. <laughs> after they didn't sleep because they were terrified of what they were seeing, um, they said, Francis, do you want to swap rooms with us? I said, sure, why not? So they, they t- went to, I went to the werewolf room. <laughs> and, I, and they now went to the room I'd already cleaned up. That, from that point onwards, those werewolves never visited that girl again. Not because I was casting out demons, though. What was I doing? I was seeking Jesus. I wanted the presence of God like crazy. I, it didn't even occur to me. Demons did not occur to me at the time. Well, later on, they told me that. Oh, yes, by the way, that room we went to. Uh, uh, and I always knew that when I'm going somewhere, I prime that place for seeking God. So what does that mean? I'll come there with hunger in my heart. I'll spend time praying there. You just leave the memory of your pursuits of God around the place so that you lodge that muscle memory in your soul. When I last came here, I was, I was hungry for God. It's kind of like what happens when you hear a song, you feel an emotion, you hear that song again later on, that emotion is kind of triggered a little bit. Does that make sense? That's why when you, maybe when you were a kid, you saw one TV show you used to watch, then one day you hear the song for that thing. All the feelings of that thing come back to you. You can use those things as weapons in your pursuits of God. Amen? Hallelujah. How did I cast out the demons? It wasn't by burning them by fire and casting them by fire. There's time where you must tell the devil to get out. Amen? In fact, most of your demon casting would be, well, that's not true. Most of demon casting would be in pursuing God. But there's specific times you're going to have the enemy acting a fool in front of you. And you tell him, get out. Jesus Christ told the devil, get out. It's not in the Bible. What did he tell the devil? After the devil was tempting him, he said what? Get out of here. Worship God only. Only him shall you serve. So there's, there's a period of time when, let's say you're, you're pursuing the Lord and the enemy is distracting you. He's intentionally coming after you. You pause. Oga? Not Oga, sorry. You're the one that did Oga. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone understand what I said about 2022? It's a year of warfare, right? Collecting what belongs to you. Things that have been taken from you, they're going to be restored. But to do that, you must allow yourself to be convicted, amen, of the righteousness of God, amen, in Christ Jesus that you have become. That thing bears fruit in your life. It bears convictions. There is a response that you have instinctively once you know this truth. And don't allow it to just be confession. What are the consequences of being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Go and spend time in the scriptures and find out what happens to righteous people. The Bible says the wicked shall be cut off from the earth. The transgressor should be rooted out of it. If anyone should be attacking you, there should be judgment on their head. You don't have to decree judgment, though. There's so oh, no, Hallelujah. I can share with you many fun testimonies. Amen. I've come out from a season of warfare. That's why. So I have many fun stories to tell. Hallelujah. And I'm kind of still in the season of warfare. Hallelujah. It doesn't, there's this Christian war. It doesn't actually end. Because the place I'm supposed to get to is, I, I'm not going to make messing the host at the limit per se, but that is where every child of God should be functioning. In that place where the enemy is, which is convention is happening, and you tell them it's not happening, not in this area. To do that, you must have conviction. The, the one that is disturbing you now, that can't read the Bible in the morning. 
how would you go and deal with uh, uh, Wayek, <laughs> West Africa, Evil Spirit Council? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> how are you going to deal with them? That's an examination that you must have studied for, right? Not because, like Jesus Christ told his disciples, these kind, they only go out by what? Praying and fasting. He was, he was teaching them actively how to resist the enemy. He said, oh, to deepen your convictions here. Because Jesus Christ gave them authority to cast out demons, right? But some of them, they weren't going, oh, you must actually live like me. For this one, for this one to come out, they're not co you're not convinced about the authority I gave you until you're actually living like me. Does that make sense? So when you're living like Jesus, oof, there is a, there is a synergy that comes, right? And you can speak not just with your mouth. Your life is speaking. So you're saying get out. Everything is saying what? Get out. You're speaking with your mouth. You have the microphone of your life, right? Amplifying what you're saying. And the loudspeakers are driving them away. Hallelujah. Season of warfare. Year of warfare, sorry. Things will be restored. Things will be reclaimed. The accuser that has reasons why you should not be entering into what belongs to you. He will be silenced by virtue of your righteousness. Not by virtue of your praying and your fasting has to be properly, for lack of better words, we have to be efficient believers. Don't just fast and pray for fasting and praying's sake. You're fasting and praying for conviction. Who knows what I'm saying? I think it was um, Pastor Philip Boko that said something that he, the name of Jesus came to him one day in Bible study and he went and fasted for three days um, without food or water, okay? Now, someone would say that and say, okay, it's about going through this without food and water. When he came out, he destroyed the covens that were in his village. He tore all the shrines down. I can assure you, if you don't walk with that same conviction, you might not get the same results. Yes, sir. It's, not, it's not the praying and fasting that does the job. Jesus Christ is not praying and fasting right now, I can assure you. If I if you check the Bible, Jesus Christ was eating and drinking. They said he was partying all the time. Imagine Jesus Christ came out from a... <laughs> imagine you'd be praying and fasting all your life. Okay? And then... <laughs> <laughs> this, is so, so, this thing is so unfair. <laughs> you have been suffering yourself. I'm a, I'm a, okay, we'll, get, we'll explain in a second, okay? <laughs> You've suffered yourself since. Amen? Praying and fasting so that you can do some work. And Jesus Christ came from what? <laughs> One party from a feast. Jesus Christ has finished dancing. Jesus Christ danced so, a holy dancer. Jesus Christ did not do, um, is it, I don't know what dances are popular now. Amen? But he, he's finished doing what? Eating food, eating chicken, everything. And then both of you. Okay? And you don't know who you are. Now, if you're fasting and praying for conviction, absolutely, the evil spirit will give way, right? But if you don't know who you are, and you're depending on your prayer and your fasting, the day that I didn't pray and fast, you cannot do what Jesus did. Yes, sir. Amen? Where you're living out your life. Amen? And then what's happening? Hallelujah. Everyone understand what I'm saying? Welcome, Pastor Douglas. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. All right, so year of restoration, year of recollection, recovery, hallelujah, restoration, hallelujah, that which was lost being restored, hallelujah. Okay, so everyone, everyone understands what I've said so far, right? I want us to do our opening prayer, hallelujah. Can we stand? Or oh, Neil, if you want to, <laughs> I feel like you're like, okay, Neil, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Hallelujah. Just shut your eyes. We're looking for conviction, right? Someone asked Jesus, what should I do that I may do the works of God? Jesus said, only believe. So when God is speaking to you, let's say you're dealing with masturbation, pornography, some kind of substance abuse, and God is saying that you are his son, you need a conviction of God's word. That, is, that will overwhelm you beyond what that temptation can afford. When God is telling you, forgive that person, and bitterness is raging, and God says, you are my son, the image of Jesus Christ on the cross, saying, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. To the people that finish whipping the nonsense, I mean whipping him like, treated him like trash.
we need that conviction that Christ is in us. We need that resolution. The reason we're going to give ourselves. I'm not going to go back to that life I was living. Because Christ lives in me. Because God has called me righteous. I remember when in uh, I can't remember what year this was, I think 2012 or 13 Christmas. I was struggling with something. And a man of God said something about me. He said, I met this young boy. This boy loves God. He's burning away for Jesus at, at right now. At that time, I wasn't burning for Jesus. But when he spoke that thing into me, when I heard him say that thing, I was like, I cannot be in this place. That's not who I am. I used that conviction and I tore away every single distraction. And made resolution in my heart. This is what you're saying about me, Jesus. Almighty God. Whose words make everyone else a liar. You've called me your son. You've said Jesus is inside of me. The one that never sinned is inside of me. And your word says that he that is born of you does not sin. This is inside of me. The Bible says the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit has the evidence you need to persuade you of who you are in Christ Jesus. He has the records. He has, he's an eyewitness. He knows who you are. So when Satan is condemning you, the Spirit of God comes to you and he tells you, that is not true. Here is the record. Here is the transcript. This is who you are in Jesus. We are looking for evidence to be persuaded. Shanda bara ba sumbra ma kande mereke tu yana maroso taya embro poko sembre mekota in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, has promised us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Shanda bara ba rose prebe keti yana marodo soto yana ma embro sembre bekembre bekambra ba kaso embra ba gashunda yama regede de de marodo bosa embra kandi yana marodo pa seneri yana marosa enkro kote de de broshe de de brosa aranda ba kama kandi yana ma child of God we want to come into agreement with Jesus how can two walk together unless they agree. Christ in you, you have to agree with him. Agree with him. I can't go back to that old life. I cannot continue. Lord, I'm asking for evidence, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I am called by you, Lord Jesus, to lay hold on this heritage, on this ancestry, to lay hold on your life, Lord Jesus, 
to lay hold, Lord Jesus. I meant to share the same convictions that God has. God's convictions are meant to be mine. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God. I'm speaking even right now to the Spirit that is inside of God. Who is also inside of me. Spirit of the living God. Declare to me the things that have been freely given to me. Reveal to me, Holy Spirit, who I am in Christ Jesus. Who I am in Christ Jesus. For many of you, it might come as a dream, a vision, an encounter of some sort. Some of you might come as an understanding. It might come as a straight up conviction, some kind of experience. But the end goal is to communicate to you that all things have passed away. Letting you, letting you know, behold, all things have become new. Oh, I will seek you, Jesus. I will love you, Jesus. I will love you, Jesus. I will fellowship with you, Lord Jesus. I will fellowship with you, Lord Jesus. Beloved, the image and likeness of God. The Bible calls Christ the image of the invisible God. He is resident inside of you. That means that right now inside of you, that form of God is present. You can fellowship with God. The Bible says that Moses spoke with God. Or God spoke with Moses as a man speaks to his friend. Beloved, there is a deeper level of communion that comes to you when you have his form. Acknowledge, beloved, this wonderful thing that is inside of you in Christ Jesus. Acknowledge, Lord. Acknowledge the Lord Jesus' presence inside of you, beloved. We thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Shanda da baraba supa kada ya da 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 da. Eranda baraba basoko te ya la da 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 barosha da da baya. E krote para da barosha da da ya da barokota. E prose ke tele de de barosa ta baya da. E shunt mere ke sunte na marodobosa. Everyone say this year. I will experience recoveries. I will experience restoration. I will experience restitution in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for restoring to me the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm has eaten. Restoring to me the lost, lost years, the years of distraction, the years of pl complacency. Lord, you are restoring to me you are redeeming the times, even by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Can we give thanks to the Lord? Can we worship the Lord Jesus and tell him thank you for restoration? This is a year that should be spent recovering things that were lost. So the place of the enemy has stolen things from you. Whether it's in areas like your, your character, your prayer life, your purity. Building back the walls that the enemy has run down. Some of us, there's a life of honor that God has for us. And the enemy has attacked us and made us live the same life the world is living. Your honor is to be restored to you. So that lifestyle will be restored to you. And you will adopt it as your own as your culture, as your way of doing things. I will not be shameful in my ambitions, in my actions. No, I'll be a man of honor. Thank you, Jesus. I am royalty, the Bible says. I am royalty, the Bible says. Son of the living God. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just real quick, and all the campers, just under your breath, you can speak to the Lord. Ask him for something special this camp. Amen. It's good that when you ask the Lord intentionally, he rewards you. Just ask him for what you want him to do. Hallelujah. Now, make sure as you're asking him, you're not asking him to do a fairy, God, father, or mother thing. Amen. When you're praying, when you're, God says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That means you desire that thing. So you're praying for something you desire. Now I want you to plug your desire in. If you're looking forward to an encounter for God, your desire, I would say a man, when he's consumed by desire, amen, he goes in search of all wisdom, separates himself. So if your desire is genuine, you're going to find that convictions will begin to drop into your heart. The things that you need to do to make room for God to give you that thing you're looking for. If you want to experience Jesus in a way that you never have, I experienced a new realm in God recently, and it was beautiful. I've not learned how to walk in that, but it was a beautiful thing. It happened during Easter. I'll keep on shouting his testimony so that God can hear me and bring it back. Amen. <laughs> but there's something wonderful when you experience something new in God. You cannot, it's something you cannot, you can't even conceive it without that experience. A new realm in God I'd never touched before, never in my life. It was so, he was so real. He's still real, amen? But I know what I'm saying. Trusting the Lord that all of you will experience the fruit, amen, of this prayer in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these young ones, Lord God. They're giving up their weekends to spend time with you. They want to fellowship with you, Lord God. They want to know who you are. Lord, you know the hungry. And you know what your word says. You would fill up. You would fill up the hungry and the thirsty. Lord, out of your goodness and your mercy, Lord God, even those who are not hungry, Lord God, I thank you for touching them as well. We thank you because you're a good God. You desire to give us your dominion, Lord Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, we can sit down. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to run, try and hit less than, by the mercy of God, we have to get out of here quickly because Pastor Douglas has um, a school to run. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Can you put the Open Heavens flyer on the screen? Any one of the two will be fine. Open Heavens, ecosystem of the age to come. Hallelujah. So um, before we jump into that, um, we've been on a journey our community recently amen and the lord has been revealing to us you know okay thank you yes yes the other one is fine i prefer the dark one actually doesn't that look so cool I saw that image online i was like huh that looks really cool okay so okay i actually i, I paid for it oh the theme like like okay well, it came from oh wow oh we thank god we thank god wow 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 <laughs> When it could come out. <laughs> amen, amen. Mm. Yes, I listened to a few. There's a few ones you posted online that I watched. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, um, there was a journey that we've been on as a community, like he just mentioned. And um, honestly, before, there was a few things the Lord, there's a few landmarks the Lord had us on before we arrived here. And one of them was on the spirituality of the earth. Amen? The fact that when God set everything out, God actually laid out like rules, right? Um, let me see. How can I? Give me Proverbs chapter 9. Or is it 8? I think it's 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Let's start from verse, um, from verse 12. You can use the open heavens backdrop, even though it's about kids next school, but yes, yes. 
Yes. Hallelujah. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, you're going to see references in the Bible that explain explicitly that Christ has made unto us wisdom. Amen? Now, there's something called the form of God. You know, right now, if I take a knife and I cut off a piece of you, amen, somehow, hallelujah, you're good, piece of you, okay, somehow that piece of you is now unanimated because of the separation that comes up with that, right? There's a way that God is where any facet of his being that you interact with has its own personality. So let's say you interact with God's word. There is a person that responds. He has a unique personality. When I say his personality, he has emotions. He has a personality. He has mannerisms. Yes, almighty God, right, in his form. The reason why there's difficulty explaining these things is because when we're using words to describe things, amen, words are referencing, are, referen are like pointers, referencing things that we've experienced before. Does that make sense? So when I say dog, when I say anything, I'm, I'm, exp I'm saying these things, expecting that you've had history on the earth enough to understand what I'm saying. Does that make sense? So when I say, when I ask now, does that make sense? That sequence of words right there, there's an emotion, right? That when things make sense that you have, when you understand something. There's also an emotion when you don't understand something. So I'm asking you, that's emotion. That's we feel when we understand something. Do you have that emotion right now? Yes, I do. Okay, so you respond. Does that make sense? There are some things that we don't have words for. Because unless the people that are giving us our Webster's and Oxford Dictionary, right, are seekers of God, there is a limited scope, right, of words available to describe some things. Does that make sense? The form that God has, there are no words for it yet. That's the truth. Why? The Bible explains the book of 1 John and the book of John that no one has seen God at any time. What the Bible is saying by that is that the form that God has, it is impossible on this side of creation, right? On, on this, let me, let me, okay, let me explain something that would help. Hallelujah. I've explained this to a few campers before, but I feel like there's a new faces here, okay? So in the beginning, when God started off, how many of God does not live in heaven? How many of you know that? The need to have a place to live in is something that we've known here in creation. The form that God has doesn't require a habitat. God functions self-sufficiently, right? When I say self-sufficiently, God's self-sufficiency is not like in isolation. Even self-sufficiency, amen, that we know about is still something that we found here. What, when I say God is self-sufficient, it's beyond that thing that you know about self-sufficient. Does that make sense? His self-sufficiency is not in isolation. It's not also what you know as self-sufficiency. He has a form that allows him to exist. In fact, what you call reality is something that he produced. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I'm using all these things so that when I'm using all these words, now someone would say, hey, God, this thing is so deep. Please, just tell me that Jesus loves me. Who here feels that way? Raise your hand. <laughs> Amen. Now, I would encourage you in the days that we're, that we're living in, amen, to make sure that every faculty of your soul, amen, is being actively engaged when you're pursuing God. You know the reason why? As we're going to be confronting sin, you need to be able to give answers for the reason why what God is saying is true. The Bible says the knowledge of God's glory will cover the earth as the, as the waters cover the sea. We have to be able to explain to people why gay marriage is wrong, explain it to an unbeliever. <clears throat> and when you finish explaining the wisdom of God's righteousness, you say, God sets it like this. Does that make sense? By the time you finish persuading them, using the wisdom of God and laying it out, when you finish, do you know who came up with this thing? Someone that loves you. Is anyone listening? When you finish explaining it to them, without mention God's name until the end. Remember how Daniel does stuff? Explain to him, when it's not finished or whatever, it is God that said this to you, Pharaoh, O king, or Nebuchadnezzar, or whoever you are. Is everyone listening? By the time they finish baptizing you with the wisdom of God, because the wisdom of God, God is not stupid. When God tells you to do something, there is a wisdom behind it. Now, that wisdom, we have to give it what? Expression. Give it flesh. Build a body around it. Allow people to see it. So that when people are arguing and making noise, like this abortion thing that recently just, how many know about the abortion thing that just got overturned? Amen? 
Do you know that the lie about the medical medical thing, um, the need for um, what is it now? Abortion as a source of medical, as a medical ah to solve medical issues. Like for example, now there's something called endothermic endo ectopic pre pregnancy. Can you remember? I posted it on my Instagram. I forgot what it's called. Ectopic pregnancy. Okay, abortion is not that thing when you're dealing with that issue that can be fatal. Amen. We have to be able to know the answers to these things. Is everyone listening? You know the reason why? Witchcraft, sorcery, is determining what the laws are. Roe v. Wade, that law, that, that, that's, that's a court case that puts a law in place for 50 years in America that children were being slaughtered like, like chickens. It came from dark, darkness, dark wisdom. And they didn't come and say that, oh, did you Kalaba gave me this? What did they say? The women, what if they, are, what if they need to kill the baby to survive? That is why... Now, they're, disc they're using the ectopic pregnancy argument to explain abortion. Of course, that's what I'm saying. And by doing that, they can now legalize the execution of children. Innocent blood. No, no, the more innocent the blood, um, what is now, blood sacrifice is, the more potent it is. And they can now use that to now sway the country in whatever direction it's supposed to go to. America is supposed to be head on, head on for sheep nation status. They are trying to use abortion to steer the nation away. Just like some people in political, I won't say their names, hallelujah, because we're on live stream. And in Google now, they have sniffers that can, when you say someone's name, if you search for their name, so if you search for anything, Google actually has the transcript of everything that is said in that video because it has auto-generated auto captions. So it searches the captions as well. So if I say, I won't say anyone's name. <laughs> so that when they search for his name, they will find, it, they will find me mention his name here. But there's someone right now who is kidnapping people so that he can win something. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? And they need sacrifices. Hallelujah. So we want to steer this nation into hell. Now, when we say hell, don't just think about hell as one bad place where there's corruption everywhere. Hell is actually, amen, a system. You know, there is, there's the armpit of hell, amen, and there's the face of hell. You know your armpits, there's hair and all that. They're like, please cover that thing. Uh -huh, let's see your face. What people want is not the armpit of hell. I was at the police station yesterday. I saw armpit of hell, I'm telling you. <laughs> Amen. But there's the face of hell, which you find in places like Dubai. Amen. Where you see wickedness, but very clean streets. Where you, you see hatred for God. Exactly. So what you see, eh, eh, this is how a country should be run. So like when you're arguing with God, you have reasons to argue with God. Like I, one of my friends, um, he has, um, what is he wants to pray for someone that um, was in a wheelchair. I wanted to pray for power of God to touch her. He felt a conviction that she was going to get healed. It's like, oh, I feel this unction, healing unction. I feel if I pray for you, you're going to get up. Said, no, 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 no. I have surgery scheduled for tomorrow. So Almighty God came and gave that guy unction to get this woman healed. Right? And then she has surgery tomorrow. God must not know what he's doing, right? What if that surgery is lethal? What is wrong with allowing God to minister to you? You see, what I'm trying to say here is that they now have options. We don't need God. We don't need God. That's what I'm saying. Now, it doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound bad. We don't, we don't really need God. We are okay. Look at how clean the road is. You now have argument. I can assure you, the armpit of hell, you cry out. If you're in the armpit of hell, you cry out for God. See, Nigeria, how we're praying and fasting. We can pray and fast in Nigeria like this because we're in the armpit. Many Nigerians, when they go to Dubai, their prayer altar just dies. Because they've seen the face of hell. Kai, this hell is fine, Sha. Thank God we've left that armpit. Who's not what I'm saying? When children of Israel were, now Egypt was bad, amen? But when they left Egypt went to the wilderness, Moses was fine. You know why? In that wilderness, God was there. In the promise that God is there too. Does that make sense? But the issue is not about wilderness or promised land. It's that what? That God is there. Who knows what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> I'm just wondering how I straight to where I am right now. I'm supposed to be talking about wisdom, dwelling with prudence. Hallelujah. God in the beginning, yes, when he set things out, amen, he laid things out with something called wisdom, amen, which is a facet of his being. In that form that God has, amen, his wisdom has a personality. I'm going to hear her speak. 
I wisdom dwell with prudence and final knowledge and, and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Now, this is wisdom expressing, God's wisdom what? Expressing herself. I'm saying herself because in the Hebrew, if you read this or whatever, you see that it's a feminine pronoun used to describe that personality. Amen? Hallelujah. How many of you know that the image and likeness of God is not masculine? Okay, good. <laughs> Bible says male and female created he them. He made man in his image and likeness. That man was Adam and Eve. Amen? Both, in fact, can I, can I get on with you? The image of God is not meant to be shared by just one person. It's meant to be given to all of humanity as God decide, this designed it to be. That we would have those, see those personalities? We have to take on those personalities. If the law was, to, if, if things were to function as they should, every one of us would be capturing every single facet of God's being. And giving what? Those emotions would have them instinctively. What you call your personality, because of the fall, is now a caricature of something inside of God. That's your sarcasm. Allow God to deal with it. You will see something in God that it bears witness to. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. Counsel is mine. Sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign, and rulers decree justice. Next page. By me, princes rule and nobles, and the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and wisdom and honor, sorry, are with me. Enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I have, I traverse the way of righteousness, next page, in the midst of the paths of justice. Amen. You're seeing wisdom here, kind of like an exp explaining here that I know the way to live right. Okay. That I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth. You see how justice brings what? Wealth, riches, okay? That I may fill their treasuries. Problem is that when you hear wealth, there's something that comes to our head, which is what? Naira. Money. Money. Money's a, that's actually a safer word than Naira, Naira right now, right? <laughs> I mean, every, every country experiences inflation, but Naira is, we thank God for Buhari. Hallelujah. <laughs> I saw that they've gone to 651 now. Black market. And then the... <laughs> You know, all of that is also by people that are engineers <laughs> so that they can win something. Okay. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way before his works of old. So when God was starting off creation, what happened? Wisdom was present there. I have been established from everlasting from the beginning before there ever was an earth. Where there were no depths, I was brought forth. Where there were no fountains abounding with water. Next page. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth, while as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the primal dust of the world. That primal dust of the world means like the elements from where creation spawned. Now, the way God designed everything, okay, was that when God wanted to start off everything, okay, the Bible says that God has set his throne in the heavens, all right? That place, all right, where God interacts or is able to interact with creation, that place is called God's throne. And that throne is found where? In heaven. Does that make sense? Think about God as, let's say that this TV, this is the best way of explaining this. See this TV here? I can show you things that are happening in China. Does that make sense? Things that are happening in Japan, in Zimbabwe, on this TV. Now, through this TV... You can experience to some degree what's happening there. Does that make sense? That's what God's throne does. It's like a technology of God through which creation is able to experience God. Does that make sense? God's throne is not a chair. Hallelujah. Don't limit God to that. I can show you a Bible verse where God's throne appears as a pavement that he stood on. It's in Exodus chapter 24. Amen. When children of Israel, they went up to dine with God on Mount Sinai, and they saw the floor, the ground, was made of sapphires. Is this confusing or is this hard? Is this hard? If it's hard, raise your hand. It's okay, it's okay if it's hard. Is it, is it done? Is it hard? <laughs> no, that is hard. Hallelujah. In his wisdom, when he built his throne, from his throne flows out, amen, the experience of God that creation in its current state can afford. Now, the reason for that throne is because Almighty God, listen very closely, okay? Almighty God, okay, when he set out to create everything, had an idea, amen? Had something that he mused on, amen? 
had, had a, the Bible calls it the good pleasure of his will, had an intention. Amen? Now, God's desire, amen, was that he would experience himself as a community. What did I just say now? Now, that experience, the Bible refers to it as fellowship in the book of 1 John, all right? Basically, what's happening is that God wants to, for lack of better words, enter himself as an avatar and communicate with himself. Does that make sense? And by doing that, ex experience all of his faculties, all those personalities I spoke of. He wants to do that. Now, okay, yes. Is bad or good? Okay, an avatar is like a representation of yourself. So like when you're playing a video game, that person that you identify as yourself, that, ah, they killed me. They didn't kill you. That, that thing is what, what died, that avatar. Does that make sense? That player one, fight. The, that thing that points on your head, you are player one. No. That's your avatar. That's not really who you are. That's where the movie, the movie avatar came from that. You enter this other world as another creature. That's not really you. Does that make sense? Now, God wants to... Now, that's a, that's a, these are movies and video games I'm talking about right now. God actually wants to end. I'm using the word as an avatar because the form he's going to take when he's inside of creation, amen, he's going to resemble an entity that he created called humanity. Amen? God wants to enter into creation and look at creation, amen, and see himself in creation. And by doing that, God can experience creation. Now, God wants to do it in a way that not only he will enjoy it, but every part of creation that looks like him will also be experiencing him at the same time. So think about it like this huge festival, this huge feast, this huge party where God reveals who he is to all of these things that he created that will now look like. Does that, does that make sense? Let me explain the nature of God. God is someone that is given to friendship, to fellowship, to community. God loves love. Thank you. God loves togetherness. God likes, now at the same time, God likes variety. God likes differences. God likes, ah, you look different from me. Wow, that's amazing. God is creative. That was what? And you're me at the same time. You see that? God likes that. God likes creativity. Because that's actually what happens when you love people. When you love someone, dreams, right? Flood your heart and your mind, right? Of the future of the past, of the present, right? God is like that too, because he put that inside of us as a caricature of what he experiences, right? And all of these things, God wants to express all of them at the same time. Now, to do this, the skeletal framework of who God is, that skeletal framework had to be, first of all, be laid out first. And this looks like laws. They're called the laws of God. Now, these things, they drive all of creation. Amen? You can resist these laws for a period of time, but after a while, creation rebels against rebellion. Does that make sense? So what you find is that you can stretch this thing as far after a while, but after a while, you find, thank you. After a while, they're like, no, this is actually how God wants it to be. Does that make sense? And all of creation is designed this way, the same way your human body is designed to function like this. If you check, something abnormal enters your body, your body is trying to get back into, like, balance, in, even in nature, the reason for storms is because creation is trying to get back if the humidity level is high, if the air pressure is low, if some parameters are tampered with, a storm will develop to resolve that imbalance. Now, when that imbalance has been resolved, you see the clouds will clear out and everything is back to normal. That's actually what storms do. They restore things. I know that sounds bad because storms are usually associated with evil and bad, but they act with chaos. But actually, that's, what, that's actually what happens when bad things happen to people. Amen? Something is meant to be restored. If you don't love God, though, you'll just be destroyed. Amen? But if you love God, the Bible says all things work together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Please stay with me, man. This might be a little bit technical, okay? But because of these laws running throughout all of creation, you see verses in the Bible that explain things like the heavens declare the handiwork of God. You see things in creation speaking about how the invisible things of God can be seen clearly from the visible things. What's happening? God's intention, right, to reveal himself in creation, the skeletal framework of that can be seen. And primarily, you see the laws of God all throughout creation. Even unbelievers can pick them. 
you see things like karma. Who ever heard about karma before? Good karma, bad karma. You did bad to me, then because of that, bad thing's going to happen to you. That's because when you're doing bad, you're an agent of darkness. And everything in creation wants to resolve that. If you're not repenting from the darkness, it is trying to fight you. It's not God fighting you. In the Bible, you see it as God is angry about him because of what he did. But God, I can assure you, God is not fighting anyone. In fact, the way that God has designed everything, all he is doing is revealing himself from his throne. And if you like, fight him. Because the system that he has put in place is all the weaponry necessary to deal with you and your rebellion. Is anyone listening? No, no. When God conceived, the Bible said that the Lamb, Jesus Christ, okay, was what? Slain from where? Before the foundation of the world. So God preconceived every possible permutation. Is anyone listening? Everything that could possibly happen, God has captured it. So when you're coming up with your new ideas, I always thought in my mind, I've always said, about, I've said this before during some of the camps, I can imagine what the devil was, what God was, was when he was inside of Satan's head, looking at what, as he was planning his rebellion against God. So he's thinking, I'm going to do this, and then I'll be like the most high. And God is like, hey, oh God, what am I going to do? <laughs> or oh Jesus. Jesus says yes. What are we going to do? <laughs> Amen. Because why? As the enemy is planning everything, God is right there. And God, the Bible says that God sees our thoughts afar off. So before you can even conceive them, who knows what I'm saying? So God can even tell you, you are going to be tempted here. Like just, what, it's not what Jesus told Peter. You are going to deny me. Three times. Gave him details. <laughs> if I went to say, before, before. <laughs> now when you finish that, I've also prayed that you be restored. Now when you are restored. <laughs> Is everyone listening? So there's nothing that surprises God. So you don't see the devil fighting against God. God says, hey, Michael, go and fight it. Where's Michael? <laughs> Amen. Is this sign? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Peace sign. <laughs> amen. No, that, that's not how things work. If you rebel against God, amen, what I like, you know, excuse me for me of the MCU, but I like this character, Thanos. There was, um, back before he came, you know, all throughout the MCU, um, up until the very last, I think, Infinity War, you never really see him. He's just sitting down on this chair. Someone was insulting him because he got one of these Infinity Stones and was shouting at him, you can't do anything to me, this and this and this. The guy just turned off the, <laughs> the TV and walked away. Because in his mind, he knows that he cannot even afford to. Do you know how? Do you know who God is? Tell you something. Do you know who you are? Do you know the devil was dealt with by a human being? Do you know? How the, notice the devil. The devil and every single principality that rebelled against God, they were all destroyed by one man. So why would God get off of his throne and go and start fighting Satan? No, God condescended himself to human form. To fight Satan, to make it a, f- a fair fight, and to make it e- to make it even more fair. What did God? The Bible says that when Jesus Christ was was cross, He said something: "The spirit is willing, but what? But the flesh is weak." You know what else? To make matters worse, God put an extra handicap. He weakened His body, and did what? Quoted all of our sins, and packed them on His head. Why have you forsaken me? So that it can be an even fight. And when he now went to hell, he defeated him in his home territory. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So how can God come off of his throne and start fighting Satan? There is no room for that. Do you know the Bible explains that an angel, not a strong angel, a powerful angel, an angel takes Satan and puts him in the bottomless pit and he puts a seal there. Just imagine the, the narrative there. Carrying the devil, I come, 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 come. They now, they didn't, they didn't, it wasn't like, go inside, I go inside, go inside, go inside. <laughs> Lock the door. God, Jesus, this guy's a, this guy's a rebel. <laughs> no, that's why I like some of these movies now. There's this, I can't remember what it was now. Is it, um, okay, there's this new TV show called, um, I've, not, I've not seen it before, but this, I see um, clips on YouTube. It's called Halo, the Halo the, it's based on the Halo um, video games. But there's this thing I saw, someone has like this weapon that when he just beams it at you, okay, you know the Incredibles? Who knows the Incredibles, Incredibles movie? There's this thing they point at you, when it points at you, it freezes you. It can't move. So it's a laser, yes, it causes zero point energy. When it points at you, you can use it to move you around. I want you to imagine that's what that angel did to the enemy. The enemy was going around doing stuff. What are they doing? Running to and fro, causing him shut up. And, and does what? Puts him inside the bottomless pit. Then <laughs> Is everyone listening? So that when you're fighting the devil, hallelujah. Amen. The 
issue is that you don't know who you are. That is the issue. The evil spirit chasing you is your ignorance. The thing pressing you at night is your ignorance. That headache you're feeling <laughs> is your ignorance. Now, ignorance is dangerous, so we're laughing. Ignorance is very dangerous. Because people have died because of ignorance. That's the truth. I remember a specific um, person that we're praying for to come back to life. Now I know what to do. It is so painful when I look back on that because I, I saw th the signs that that person was there were there, but I didn't know what to do. I was ignorant of what to do. Is everyone listening? So ignorance is not just, oh, it's just ignorance. No, 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 no. <laughs> ignorance has to be dealt with. Is everyone listening? So that you can deal. <laughs> you can deal. Is everyone listening? Hallelujah. So when God laid out all of his plans, right? Laid out everything. Let's, let's see this in the Bible, okay? Give me Ephesians. No. Let me show that vision of God that I mentioned before. Give me Ephesians chapter 1. From verse, let's start from verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. I said that really fast, but understand this, okay? Redemption comes from the blood of Jesus. We're redeemed by his blood. Now, that redemption is called the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Forgiveness of sins doesn't mean that God is pardoning you. Amen? God cannot not pardon you. You know, I said before that God doesn't have to fight you. God doesn't keep record of wrong. Can I tell you something? When you sin against God, the reason why God has a memory of it is because he doesn't keep records of wrong. God doesn't have to do it. Do you know who keeps record of wrong? The devil keeps record of wrong. You know who else? You! The Bible says that if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. Your own heart can condemn you. You know what else can condemn you? Your own physical body. So your soul can condemn you. Your body can condemn you. Your spirit will condemn you because your spirit is life because of righteousness, right? Because Christ is on the inside of you. So you can get condemnation from God. What you get is conviction, right? But your body can condemn you. Your heart can condemn you. So what does forgiveness of sins mean then? If God is not keeping records of wrong, and if, because we don't just say, it's not a nice sermon or a nice quote. You know, we have all these nice quotes, and then we just we leave them hanging there. No, no, we follow this thing to the end. If it's true, you drive it all the way home. Okay, so if God doesn't keep records of wrong, what on earth is happening then? That means someone is keeping records of wrong. So what is forgiveness of sins then? It is that record of wrong being purged. Is everyone listening? Where I don't, I don't, have, I don't have recollection of how to do what I did. That's why they say something like the, 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 hardest, the hardest act of murder is your first person you've killed. Once you've killed, it's called a gateway, right? Gateway murder or gateway drug. When you smoke your first joint, that's the thing that got you there was the hardest thing you had. Once you smoke that first one, the next one is easier. The next one is easier. You know why? The record is there. Now, when you take away that record, if you touch that thing again, it's like the first time. As if you've never smoked it before in your life. That's what purging of, that's what forgiveness of sins is. Redemption. You have no record. So that's why the enemy can come to you. And if you know this thing, if you know this thing, is everyone listening? Okay. According to the riches of his grace. Later on, you see that Paul prays for your eyes to be opened, that you may know the riches of the glorious inheritance in the saints, right? That's riches of his grace there. Which he made to abound. That's when the Bible says riches that abound, what does that mean? Abundance. Abundance. In all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Now, this is the part I'm getting to, okay? The good pleasure of God, the mystery of his will, which he purposed within himself, okay? So God had something that pleased him well. You know, things that you muse on are things that please you, right? Or that you're finding delight in, or that you're enjoying. You don't think about things that are just painful. If you're doing that, that means you're finding some pleasure there. And like when someone offends you, there's an evil spirit that's giving you pleasure from thinking about how much that person, can you imagine what he did? Guy, oh God. Oh. You, you think you're angry at the person. Something is, ooh, 
Oh, yes. Say it again. Oh, he's bad. Oh, look at his head. Is everyone listening? Make it feel so. It's not you that. It's an evil spirit. Is everyone listening? Now, if you keep on meditating, the evil spirit's influence in your heart to get stronger and stronger. Convictions now. That guy needs to be hurt by me. I need to do something bad to him because of what he did. It's not you. That's the evil spirit now that's talking. Is everyone listening? So God has something that has been giving him pleasure. The Bible calls it the good pleasure of his will. It's pleased him. The way we subverse about God in the Bible, how God, the Bible says, of his own will, he brought us forth. Those are things that you meditate on. That God found pleasure in conceiving me. You know, most people, when, they con when they're giving birth to children, it's painful. God's giving birth process was pleasure. Because of the anticipation that he had to see, to bear witness, to fellowship with you. Is everyone listening? In God's heart, his musings. The Bible says the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of good, not of evil. In fact, if you keep on reading the Bible, you see in Psalm 139. Many are your thoughts towards me, O God. They cannot be recounted. In number, they cannot be counted. If they were to be counted, they are number all the grains of sand. That's serious. You know there's more grains of, do you know there's more trees on the earth than there are stars in the observable universe? Let me just say that again. There's more trees on the earth than there are stars in the observable universe. Yes. I just that recently. Now, do you know how much sand per tree? That will give you an idea of God's obsession. Is anyone listening? Hallelujah. So I think we can agree here that God is really happy about this is plan, right? What is this plan of God? That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he would gather together in one all things in Christ Jesus. Now I'm going to explain what this means, okay? Because if you keep on reading, maybe not Ephesians, but Colossians, you discover that Christ Jesus is the visible image. Let's just read, read that, I guess. Give me Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Let's start from verse 13. Whenever you see Christ in the Bible, it always says Christ is inside of you. Don't just read a one verse of scripture. I, I, I did this um, recently. This was, um, I was somewhere. I couldn't, I didn't have access to my phone or anything or whatever. I was just reading my Bible. I brought my Bible with me, physical Bible with me. And I was just reading Colossians over and over and over and over again. And it hits me. Oh my gosh. When Paul said Christ in you, the hope of glory, at the end of this chapter, it was in context with everything he said that Christ is. So here we're thinking that is baby Christ inside of us. That's not what he said. He was speaking about the person he described. Look at what he said. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. That's a throwback to what we read in Ephesians, right? He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created, next page, through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. <laughs> all of these things, he's going to say later on that this person he described is where? Now, this is what gives you authority to live like Jesus when it is hard. When it is difficult. When no one is watching. Is everyone listening? You can speak to yourself and say beyond a shadow of a doubt. Someone lives inside of me. The evil spirit that is tempting me. He framed him. Is everyone listening? I should not be subjecting myself to the influence of that one. When the one that created this one, the firstborn of this one, I submit to this one. Who knows what I'm saying? This thing requires intentional meditation. Intentional engagement. In, I want to say intentional. You must give yourself time to engage these truths. You must ponder on them. You must reason them out with your intellect, with your imagination, with your thoughts, with your emotions. 
You must actively engage them and give yourself time to ponder the consequence. You know the reason why? The Bible explains to us that the just shall live by faith. Essentially that people who are just or righteous ones, those who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, they live by faith. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen. Remember we spoke about the Holy Spirit giving us witness, right? Those witnesses, right? Those records. As you live by them, you experience the righteous life, the justified life. So you're meant to actually be giving yourself to these things actively. Now, the way you trigger the substance of things hoped for, amen, you actually have to what? Hope for them. Is everyone listening? You have to conceive them. Paul said, if you be risen with Christ, set your affections on things above. Set your mind, your gaze. So these things should be the musings of your heart. This, you know the reason why? You share the same spirits with God. Now, if Almighty God, who has this spirit we're talking about, is musing, and it brings him delight about this vision, then I said, that's the of you. Let me say something. The Bible says something. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. Yes, sir. What that thing means is that it shows you what is inside of you. So whatever the spirit of God, amen, is revealing to you is what is inside of you. Now, you as a child of God, don't go and take thoughts that are outside of you and put inside of your head. Is everyone listening? Don't go and take Satan's, don't take this world's nonsense and put inside of you. No, inside of you is Christ. Now, the Bible says, when the Bible says he's in heavenly places, don't think about in heaven as in up. You can go, I'm telling you, we're in Nigeria right now, right? Where's up? If you look at the globe, where's up? Up is like this, right? If you're in, if you're in Brazil, where's up? Up is like this. So it's not, a, it's not a geographical location, right? The heavenly place is in a state of being. Now, the Bible wants you to what? Plant yourself there. Seats there. As in what? What is it? Plant yourself, yes. Plant yourself there. In fact, if you check the scriptures very carefully, the Bible says the kingdom of God is where? Within you. Every, yes, within, inside of you. The Bible says, he that believes on me, out of your belly shall what? Flow rivers of living water. The Greek word there for living water is the same Greek word to describe the water that are flowing from God's throne in Revelation chapter 22. Okay. Is everyone listening? Everyone say convictions. You must riveted, grounded, established in the truth of God's word so that when you are being tempted, you can speak intelligently to Satan. You can let him understand the truth. Bible says that you will teach principalities and powers, the manifold wisdom of God. You will teach Satan to obey God. Someone say, hey, teach Satan to obey God? What are you saying? Let me tell you something. When Jesus Christ came to Gadara, you know what happened? The evil spirits that were there, they ran to Jesus and said, it is not time, the time is not right now. So they knew what time it was. And they told him the right time. They said, the time is not now for us to go to the abyss. It is now time for us to do what? Judge those pigs over there. In ancient Israel, growing up pigs is illegal. Because pigs have nothing to do with the, Israel, the Jewish lifestyle. They're not used for sacrifice. They're not used for, they're not, you're not allowed to eat them. So anyone that is rearing pigs is rebelling against the laws of God. So they identified what was wrong. Can we go and judge that thing? You know what happened? The devil became a tool, an instrument for the execution of the justice of God. Who heard what I said now? So you're meant to teach principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. When they see you, yes, sir, we're loyal. Is anyone listening? I know what I'm saying, though. I've experienced this thing for myself. I think it was Smith was one that he was in his, he was in bed, and then he heard some scuffling. Because I remember downstairs, so he came downstairs, wondering, what's this thing disturbing me? When he came down, he now saw that he, everything downstairs was scattered. And he said, ah, and now saw the enemy sitting down on a chair. He now said, I need you to go and clean up everything that you've done. He went back upstairs. Came back downstairs, everything was tidy, spick, and span, and the enemy was gone. 
ask. Is everyone listening? The Bible says you are going to judge angels. You will judge the world. It's not English. You must be a well, now I say practitioner because I've discovered something. Little children, this young boy's age, they begin to get exp- they begin to practice sorcery. And they are seeing dividends of it. Is everyone listening? You as a child of God, begin to practice your own craft. Of what? Knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. What is, what is our work? What is our object? What is our assignment? Someone asks Jesus, what, is, what are the works of God? Jesus Christ said what? Believe. What does that mean? My assignment is what? To frame convictions in my heart of what God is saying. How do I frame convictions? The Bible says faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Paul goes on later on in his Colossians to explain something called the full assurance of the understanding. There is an assurance that comes when your faculties are satisfied with what they have borne witness to. In other words, you keep on feeding yourself with God's word through your gateways until there is what? Assurance! Records! Then you wage warfare with record when, Satan, when, when you see contradictions to what is written. And the enemy is talking to you, telling him it is written. He's tempting you, telling him it is written. Is everyone listening? It is written. It says, I'll come record from your past. It is written. Is everyone listening? If you don't know what is written, they will beat you. I know, I know you can be carrying Christ out of you. They will do what? They will beat you. You can have the biggest gun in the universe. And one guy that's doing karate chops. <laughs> Who's ever seen some of these? You know, Iron Man versus um, Captain America. You see Captain America punching and kicking Iron Man. All Iron Man has to do, because they put him inside a bunker. Remember that? that um, who's watched Civil War before? You guys don't watch MC? Oh, holy children of God. I'm the unholy one here. Hallelujah. <laughs> They're fighting, and they, the way they fought was inside of it. They intentionally you know, know the plot. You know, it's called plot armor. To make the movie more interesting, they put some situations that would allow the storyline to be sweet. Because if Captain America and Iron Man fight, all that Iron Man has to do is just fly and just be blasting this guy with missiles, and he's dead. But what did they do? Well, you can't blast him with missiles if you're right next to him, right? So they put you inside of a bunker, a nuclear bunker. So you can't blast anyone. You will stay inside there and fight. Hey, sweet story. As a child of God, don't do sweet story, Satan. Do what? Go to the Bible says what? You're seated where? In heaven. Don't come back. Don't come down and start doing sweet story and doing civil war with Satan. Don't. <laughs> is, is everyone listening? What do you do? Go and sit, sit down where? In heavenly places. And do what? And be fired <laughs> with the truth of God's word. When he's dead, just fire a few more shots. Pa, pa, pa. You know David? When he killed Goliath. Stone the guy. The guy fell down face, face down. You know what he did? He didn't go and start dancing. He said, well, come on, one second. Just, yeah! And I carried his head, took his sword. Now we can now party. <laughs> Amen? Who knows what I'm saying? The Bible says, after you've done all to stand, stand therefore, having your waist girded with truth. Is everyone listening? Put the scriptures back up. Hallelujah. Is anyone being blessed tonight? For by him all things were created that are in heaven and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created. Okay, now leave this right here on the screen. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? And the earth was without form and was void. I'm going to explain something very interesting, okay? Please listen to me. Now, I'm not saying that everyone that says something contrary to what I'm saying is not true. You don't hear what I'm saying? But I'm going to present to you my understanding of the scriptures. And I can argue it very, very exhaustively with the scriptures. But that also is not a very popular perspective. I believe that when God created the heavens and the earth, what happened was that God brought out, amen, himself from that, in, from that world, that form that he's in, into the created space, for lack of better words. Does that make sense? Now, when God brought himself into that created space, he had no recognizable form. Is everyone listening? The Bible says that darkness was upon the face of the deep. That darkness is not the darkness of evil, but the mystery of who God is. What is darkness? You cannot see something. Amen? 
Does that mean that he's evil? If I turn the lights off here, are you, are you guys evil because the lights are off? It means you can't see something, right? The reason for evil taking on the, or being identified with darkness is because of the absence of light. But if you check in Genesis chapter 1, when God called the light day and the darkness night, God called both of them what? Good. Meaning that what? Evening and morning are what? Good. What did Jesus Christ say about good? There is nothing that is good except for God. Or if it doesn't look like God, it is not good. So each day of creation, measures of God were being what? Revealed. And when that revelation was complete, God said, this is good. Very good. Is everyone listening? So the first day, what happened? God brought light out of darkness, right? And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. In heaven, there is day, and there is what? It is in the Bible. Hey, there shall be no night there. You're a blasphemer. The no night there is speaking about the age to come. Is everyone listening? It's not speaking about the seasons of God. It's speaking about the age to come. When there is no darkness of God, God is constantly being unveiled. Let me explain what the evening is. Hallelujah. The evening is when the new season of God has not yet been revealed. That's nighttime. And the day is when that season of God for now has been revealed. That's what it simply is. So all the days of creation was God laying out what? The skeletal structure. For him. That's right, for the next one. So day one, there is a framework that is laid down with the wisdom of God. I wisdom dwell with prudence, right? I was with the Almighty in the beginning. I was beside him. As he formed everything before the primal dust of the earth, I was there with him. So as God was what? Fashioning creation. What was God doing? He was revealing himself. In seven days, got an assignment. Got an assignment. And God's assignment was what? To recreate himself. Is everyone listening? First of all, in an entity that we know today as humanity. Is everyone listening? That's why at the very end of chapter 1, God said something. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So that what would happen? Do you know that when God creates man in his image, after his likeness, we know what man is going to start doing. Man is going to take over from God, from where God stopped. Hey, Jesus, do you know there's much of God that has not yet been revealed? It is right here. It says here, for by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on the earth. Visible and invisible. There are some things in heaven that are what? Invisible. The day of their creation has not yet come. You are to bring what? You're supposed to say, let there be. Because you're probably speaking in tongues, right? <laughs> Amen. Because that's, that's what words are for. We're referencing things that exist. They don't exist yet. You call them forth. Right? With the substance of things hoped for. <laughs> Amen. Do you know that the age to come, we are going to create the world to come. That is our first day of creation. What about because the seventh day? Our first day of creation is to do what? Create the age to come, the world to come. Is everyone listening? Where we would speak away Satan. Trust me, listen very closely, okay? The likeness of God that we're going to come into is not English. I encourage you in your free time, you guys still have your phones for today. Tomorrow, you're going to have to submit your phones. Go and search for Jane Laid, 60, um, um, 16th century prophetess prophecy, 60 propositions. It's a little bit hard to read because she speaks with um, that Shakespearean, um, Elizabethan language, that old school English. The thou's, the thou's. <laughs> Amen? It's exhausting. But if you can be patient and read through, you would see that this woman describes that there is going to be a thorough redemption, as in everything Jesus Christ has done, you are going to see it on human beings. You know, right now, all of us are redeemed, but you can't see it yet, right? Paul said it in Hebrews chapter 2. He said that God has put all things under humanity's feet, but we do not yet see it as that. But we see Jesus, who for the suffering of death was made little lower than the angels, but exalted above all things. The only example we have right now of humanity as God intended is who? Jesus. Is anyone listening? He was, he's now the avatar of God. Do you know that? The what? Avatars also. And all of us, listen very closely, together, 
will be experiencing God as God. Is everyone listening? Inside of God, experiencing God as God. We will be bringing God out from darkness into light and allowing all of creation to experience God. Don't you see how, how dogs interact with, 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 with plants? They almost instinctively know what to do. Have, hallelujah. Who knows what I'm saying? There is actually an ecosystem of God that we are meant to fetch out from the invisible world and bring here for all of us and Almighty God himself to experience. You know, God wants to be experienced. That's what fellowship is, right? When you, see, when, you see, when, you want to, when you see a friend, you now begin to share with them who you are. And you feel joy when doing that. God feels joy when he shows you who he is. Just that God doesn't speak English. God speaks himself. So when God is talking to you, telling you who he is, I like how God revealed himself. Who are you? What did God say? I am. It wasn't those words. No, he brought forth himself, revealing himself to Moses. When they ask you, what is his name? <laughs> I just imagine what happened when he met the elders of Israel. I'm sure that a, a, a ghostly presence should have flooded all of them. Yes, we know who this is now. <laughs> who sent you here? Power God hits all of them. Okay. What does he want us to do? <laughs> Remember when Jesus Christ, when they asked Jesus, when they came to arrest Jesus, sorry, and they said, Jesus asked them, who are you seeking? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Does everyone understand? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we, um, can we just glorify the Lord real quick? Let's take a pause. Just acknowledge everything. I want you to see yourself in the epicenter of the will of God. No, forget about the bank account. Forget about the setbacks of life. Once you met Jesus, you have won in life, I can assure you. Especially now, at this time, when God is unveiling how incredible Jesus is. No, in other ages, the Bible says that God gave his spirit moderately. God poured out of his spirit moderately. At this time, beloved, we're at the end of the ages. God is going to put himself on display. The Bible says the gospel, the good news of God's kingdom will be published to every single person. Every single country will bear witness to how amazing God is. The Bible says the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Until this happens, this age will not end. That means that all of those things must happen before Jesus Christ returns. There must be a display of God's awesomeness. And God is not going to demonstrate it himself. You are the avatar. When God went to destroy principalities and powers in hell, Jesus was the avatar. Now that God wants to end this age, you are the avatar. You are player one. And God is the controller. And he's instructing you. Live as I live. When I press X, do what X should do. When I press circle, do what circle should do. When I instruct you, obey my voice. When you engage the word, respond, respond. To do this, you require fellowship. If you play online, you experience a principle called lag. But when you play on LAN, when you hardwire connect each other's consoles, there is no lag. While you are joint, you are connected. The Bible says, he that, is, he that is in Christ is one spirit with him. Oh, we bless your name, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. Shindadayana marosipakaladana namarotupa, shandadayana namarotupa. 
Shata manana manana nanana ba supete ya eranda barada da ba sukota nanana 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 da 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 usha. Did the scripture not say that you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High? Was this not said to those whom God's word was sent to? En krotem bere de 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 bodo dodo bo shana da bro da da baso Shi tambra ba 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 kambra ba 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 da ba da 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 E ro sembre bebe kaya na ma rodo bo shana da ba so pata ya Shi kana ya na ma rodo bo ro se pata da da ya na ma ro sa Shata makabaya bara baba baka baba baba setala yana mara da bara da da ba empra pa baba kaba gaba gaga gaga gaba da da yana da bara da da ba usa empro pa da bara da bara 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 da ba empro pa da baba baba baka shota ba yana ba empro ba 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 supa kala da bara da da ba sha empra pa ba 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 supa kada yana da ba. Oh, shita ya na barada da ba suka la da da ba seta ya. E ronda ya da ba ro sede ya na ba ro shada da ba. God's avatar is not just meant to respond when he drives impulses into your soul through the Holy Spirit, through his word. Oh, his wisdom is meant to cohabit. His righteousness, his sanctification, Yes, his power. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Renda ba ba kadi ana marota pashinda da barada da barosa. Embra pakata marada da baroshe demi ana marosa. Embra pakapa kada baraka da 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 barada da da bosa. Embra pakaba kada barada da 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 da. Embro pakaba kaka 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 barada da bas. Embro sende demi ana marodo bosa. Embrose makadiana marodo brodo brodo do dava supa ya da dava. Beloved, now are we the sons and daughters of God. You could not earn it. You could not bribe your way to be God's child. God chose us. From before the foundations of the earth. Oh, before you were formed, I knew you. I formed you. 
I called you a prophet to the nations. His spokesperson. Through you, creation will experience God. You are his spokesperson. Shanda baraba, can we pray in the Holy Spirit? Shanda braba baka baba gaga 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 basuta ya, embrote bara baka supra baka dia, eronda baka baka gaga gaga vara da da ba shuta bara da da ba sita, era baba 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 soko dia namara da 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 bausha, embraba baba baka baka gaga 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 baro she sita ya, embropa da baka 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 bara da da bara da da bausha. Ero shata baga 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 bara dada aram baba baba baga 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 bara debero sata ero shata baga 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 aram baba 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 sata embro baba 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 shota I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. Shata baga bada yada bada dada basuta ya. Beloved, we are loved. We are loved. We are the beloved of God. You have won at life. You have won at life. <laughs> we are more than conquerors. Through Him. Through Him, beloved. We have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What is our assignment? Drive this truth into your soul. Drive this truth into your intellect. Into your imagination. Into your thoughts into your will so that when the Lord speaks Christ in you responds Christ in me responds come Rembo si kala da 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 ba ra da da ba shota ya da 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 da. Rende be super kala da ba rote po sata ya da ba shota. Reke ni omo rodo bo se peke le de de bo rodo bo sha. Ramba ba 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 ka ba ga 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 ka shota. Shata ba 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 ka ba ya da ba rote pa se pataya.
Thank you, Jesus. Can we tell the Lord Jesus, thank you? The Redeemer. The Restorer. The Rescuer. That's Jesus. That's right, that's right. Bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to invite you to the table of the Lord. Can we put the Holy Communion graphic up? 
I want to encourage you to feast on the body and the blood of Jesus as we bring this session to an end. Hallelujah. We say thank you for your body, Lord Jesus. We say thank you for your blood. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your body and your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. If you're not born again, if you have not um, surrendered your life, surrendered your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I want to give you, I want to give you the opportunity to do that before we close this session. So if you haven't, I want to welcome you to the front. Hallelujah. With boldness. Um, if you haven't, I want you to raise your hand and come to the front. Make sure that window is open. Hallelujah. If you haven't confessed him as your Lord, master of your life, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus. To all the young campers that are here, I want to encourage you after we finish this session, um, I want to encourage you to go get some rest because we're going to be praying from three till about seven. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you to go get some rest. Uh, the only thing I would say after this is try to make sure that you don't distract yourself too much. Amen. Don't distract yourself at all. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Vigil starts at 3 a.m. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. You're dismissed officially. <laughs>